Hello and welcome to a new version of Tutorial 72. In this tutorial I will be showing how to use the new TradeStation drawing objects, the type that are found in version 9.5, to create three horizontal lines and then by dragging the middle line the other two lines move in a coordinated way and the the distance between the middle line and these uh, the top line and the bottom line is set up as an input in the previous version of this program i used uh, tl new and text new but i think you'll find that using the text objects actually makes this rather easier to do so what i've done is started uh, created a chart uh, a program here which is already applied to the chart and i've just left in place my name spaces and uh, my inputs now as i mentioned the distance above the middle line is set using above middle the distance below is set using below middle we're calculating the original value orange val which we're doing by taking the, the highest value of the chart, the lowest value, price value displayed at any one time. In fact, when it, when it is applied to the chart, taking half of that and then adding it to the lowest display value of the chart. We've also got some variables. We've got the mid val, which will store the mid val, the top val, bottom val, store the price value for the top line, price value for the bottom line, respectively. Then we're also going to be using horizontal line objects for the middle top and bottom line and then later on in this demonstration I'll be using the charting host so let's go ahead and start the program we're going to be using a one statement begin end and the first thing we want to do is calc when this is first applied to the chart the value of the top val and the bottom val so top val is equal to a ridge val plus above middle multiplied by min move. I'm just going to copy like so and just going to put brackets in here just to sort of clarify what we're doing and then similarly bottom val is going to be equal to just going to copy this the ridge val minus the below middle number of ticks like so Having done that, we now want to create the lines. So we're going to do that by saying underscore mid, which is the name of the middle line. And we're going to use horizontal line. And create. And we need to just supply one thing for this, and that is the price level. And the price level of the middle line is a ridge val. At least it is when we turn the chart on. So we've created the line. We're going to make sure that it persists. So mid persist equals true. In other words, it won't just be applied to the chart and then disappear the next tick. And then we actually have to add the drawing object to the chart. So that will be drawing objects dot add followed by the name of the drawing object, which in this case we know now is underscore mid. So what I'm going to do is similarly for the middle and the bottom lines. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and then change all the names and values. Just save some typing. So, so for the top, it's going to be top top and it's not going to be a ridge value. It's going to be top val like so, want it to persist, and then we want to add top. Like so, and then finally for the bottom, change that to bottom. It's not going to be top value or 
orange vowel, it's going to be bottom vowel. Like that. And we're going to add like so. Okay, so that is the, the basic original adding the lines. Let me just verify that by clicking the little green symbol or pressing F3. And uh, let's go and have a look at the chart. Now, these charts have got the programs that I've already written applied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the format and I'm going to turn off this one. It's the one that's actually available for downloads. And we need to add to the chart this new one. So I think what I'll do at this point just to tidy things up a bit is just remove all these original versions and we need to apply the program we're working on, which is Drawing Objects 1. So I'm going to go Insert. OK, so let's just leave those values as they are and say OK. And so we can see that we've got our basic lines, nothing fancy, no different styles or colors. And uh, the problem with this is that if we move the middle line, then the other lines are not going to move because we haven't added that functionality yet. So we need to go ahead and do that. So let's uh, go to the program again. And it's actually very simple to, to do that with this technology. And incidentally, just going back to the chart, you'll see that we've got the values of the lines included without having to use text new and then move the, the text to be the same place as the line, change the value of the text. That's all done automatically. And in fact, if you want to change this, uh, you can double click on uh, the line itself, then click the no, and uh, you can change the font, the size, etc. And you can decide whether you want it on the right or the left. So I'm just going to leave those as they are at the moment. Go back to the program. So the simplest way of doing this is to say if mid val is not equal to mid dot price, then begin. So what we're saying here is if the value stored in our variable mid val is not the same as what the price of that line is at the moment, then we're going to do several things. We're going to store into mid val the value of what the line is at the moment. Like so, and then we need to recalculate the top vowel and the bottom vowel. So I'm just going to go up here, borrow some some code just to save some time, and we're just going to change that ridge vowel to mid vowel. So that takes care of those, and now we need to reposition the lines and the text. And that is actually super simple to do. We just go top dot price is equal to top val. And bottom dot price is equal to bottom val. like so. So let's just verify that, see what we've got. Looks like we've got an uh, error here. Okay, we spelt, uh, should be begin, of course, and go to the chart. And you can see that's working quite well. Now, the only thing with this, I think it would be a perfectly valid way of doing it. But what I don't like about it is essentially, on each tick, the program is checking this and checking this and checking this. And there's really no need for the program, and it's probably not a problem with this program, but there's really no need to do that because the we know that the line is only going to move when we actually click on the chart and move it. So what we're going to use, uh, what we're going to do is use a charting host to tell us when the chart has been clicked, or more specifically, when the mouse button has been released. So to do that, we need to set up the charting host. So you remember right at the beginning, we're using a charting host called charting host one. And uh, at the end of our one statement, 
we're going to need to add some more code. So we're going to say charting host one is equal to new charting host like so and Okay, having done that, we now need to go back to the statement where we're moving the lines and we're going to essentially find out when the click has occurred and then run our little routine. Now, by this point, you're probably wondering where I got all this syntax from. Well, don't really need to remember that because what you can do is if you go into the toolbox, which uh, on my layout appears just here and click on charting host. Now, if charting host is not there, if you right click here and say, choose items, you'll be able to add the item, make sure that charting host is selected there, but it is available on mine. So I'm going to click charting host, make sure that's selected, go to properties and look at the events. And what we're going to do is we need to have an event when the uh, chart element is clicked. So I'm just going to double click there. And if you now look at the designer generated code, you'll see some of the syntax that I've just used. For example, the new charting host, the, the name and the event. And you can see the names are slightly different there. But what we're looking for is the event that has just been created. Now, as is called something slightly different because we called it charting host one chart element click. So what I'm going to do is just change that to one and we need to surround the, the part of our, or perhaps more appropriately, we're going to copy or cut and paste that into this method, this method that will run when the mouse is released. Press tab to indent those a little more. And, and then we're actually not, because we've already written it into our program, we don't need to use the designer generated code. So I can now delete that completely. And we should be good to go. Let me just double check. So that looks good. So I'm just gonna verify this and then just go back to the charts, make sure that's still working. And essentially the functionality is identical, but that program is not running until we actually do the click. And we could check that by just looking at the, uh, the print log and I'm just gonna clear this and then add a print statement into our So I'm just adding some text, say chart clicked. And now you'll see if we go to the chart, if I click anywhere on the chart and if I click on the, the line and then release, it will uh, register that click and then move all the lines. Okay, well, that is the first part of this video. What I'm gonna do is a second video. And in the second one, we're gonna add some more styling, colors, um, different styles of the lines, etc. So I hope you find this useful.